Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Non-profit educational personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Viewer discretion is advised. The governor of New Mexico after a tragic shooting earlier. This from Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. I am deeply upset by the tragic violence that unfolded today in Farmington. I am praying for the families of the victims, the wounded, and the entire community following this horrific tragedy. Of course, this happening around 11 a.m. this morning in the northwestern portion of New Mexico. At least three people have died following the shooting as the suspect uh, was confronted by police and also killed during this incident. I want to put up a live picture right now out of Farmington, New Mexico, as we're hearing from police on an update as they did say that at least three members of the public were killed and that officers confronted and killed the suspect at the scene. It also said two officers, including one of its own and New Mexico State Police officer, were wounded and they were in stable condition at San Juan Regional Medical Center. For more on this, I want to take you out to officials there in New Mexico as they were providing an update just a little bit ago. Let's listen in to this. Ready, Jeffrey? And that's spelled B A R I C C R U. He's ready? Yeah. So at approximately 10:57 this morning, we received multiple calls into our dispatch center. There were shots being fired in the area of Dustin and Ute. Officers responded to the area to find a chaotic scene where a male subject was actively firing upon individuals in that neighborhood. We have four officers from the Farmington Police Department that confronted the subject. They were able to stop his actions at that time. The, the suspect is deceased, but prior to that, we know that three civilians were killed by this person's actions. We also know that several other parties were injured due to the gunfire. What we do also know is that two officers were also injured, one from our agency and one from state police. They are both receiving medical care at San Juan Regional Medical Center and they are in stable condition. Right now, as you can see behind me, we have an active investigation ongoing. We are actively looking at several blocks of this crime scene to determine what actually happened. Great glory. Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi. And today is Shemesh, April, uh, May the 21st, 2023, and it's currently 1042 a.m. Eastern Time, pre-recorded. You might be able to watch this a week after. And uh, if you are a member, you are watching this just the day it's released. Shalom, beloved. Welcome. Now, a lot of things are happening out there, and 83 are not talking about it, and especially our people, we are not talking about. Well, people that you think that are people, because most of them, they are Samaritan. They disguise as us, but they are Samaritan. They are not talking about the MS that are going around. This thing happened a few days ago. It will happen, I believe, a few days right after the one that happened in Texas. So this fellow, he was an 18 year old uh, guy. Let's get him better. Authorities say the young man seen in this video went on a shooting rampage, opening fire along a residential street in Farmington, New Mexico. There's multiple shots still going off in the background on our open lines. Three people were killed. Two police officers were wounded. Several other civilians were also injured. Police say the 18-year-old shooter was killed by responding officers. Fired at least three different weapons that we have can confirm at this point, including one being an AR-style rifle. 
again, they always want to bring the whole AR style rifle and stuff like that. And so they can make this political and which is they can blame it on us. OK, so they can always blame it on us because every time things like that happen, they always bring the or gun violence, uh, gun violence and stuff, you know. And then it's black community, uh, low income neighborhood, uh, the project, the ghetto. That's what they want to do. And the problem every time they do this is getting worse. Every time they don't want to take responsibility or hold themselves accountable for the fact that they did this, it's becoming worse. So now why is those things happening? In fact, let's see the victim. Let's see who did this. And, of course, you saw the, the person that did this in the, in the video. Let's see who he took down, okay? We are learning new details about Monday's mass shooting in northwest New Mexico, including the names of those women who were killed. Police say they are 97-year-old Gwendolyn Schofield, her daughter Melody Ivy, she was 73, and 79-year-old Shirley Voita. Six other people were injured in this attack. Officials say the gunman was an 18-year-old high school student. Omar Villafranca is in Farmington with more on the story. Omar, good. Now, when you look at the faces of the, the people that they took down, okay, those are sisters, all right? Those are sisters, two sisters. Huh? Okay, all right. Let me let this play again. Were injured in this attack. Officials say the gunman was an 18-year-old high school student. Omar Villafranca is in Farmington with more on the story. Omar, good morning to you. Good morning. Police say the suspect had at least three weapons on him, including an AR style rifle that he purchased legally last year. They also say the other two weapons he got from family members. Now, he did live in the neighborhood where the shooting happened, but police say he did not know the people he killed. That. Jeffrey Clark thought someone was banging on his garage door. I went outside and peeked around the corner and saw him standing there. It turned out that banging sound was gunfire. Officials say an 18-year-old male high school student who lived two houses down from Clark was roaming the neighborhood, randomly shooting people with an AR-style rifle. Clark says as soon as he saw the shooter walk down the street, he went outside to help his neighbors. Two elderly people in their vehicle, dead, and a, a woman on the street laying, bleeding out. Police say the suspect fired more than 100 rounds in 10 minutes before officers fatally shot him. The three people who died were all traveling in their cars. Just three pillars of our community and such a tragedy. State Representative Mark Duncan is related to two of the deceased victims. Now, as you can see, beloved, this guy, the state representative, he is related to at least two of the quote unquote so called victim, but why is this keep happening? Remember that one that happened at the bank, and the governor or the senator was related uh, to one of the victim, and all of the victim are eighty three. All of them are eighty three. Let's finish watch this, and then we will go back to the picture, to the photos, and see and examine who are those people, their ages, the guys 18. You know what to do and all that. Okay, let's finish that. Gwendolyn Schofield and her daughter, Melody Ivy. He also knows the family of the third, Shirley Voida. And Aunt Melody ran a daycare, and she's impacted hundreds of lives. She taught my two youngest daughters, and then she's taught all of our, gra our grandkids that could, uh, who were old enough to go. He says Melody Ivy was extremely close with his mother-in-law and lived in the same neighborhood together. And obviously, she's, she's devastated and, and uh, kiss your loved ones when they walk out the door because you don't know for sure if they'll come back. All right. So. Family members told investigators that the suspect may have had some mental health issues. Yes, Police of course, of course. Let's let's all blame blame that on mental health and things like that. Let's just say, oh, oh, you know, this guy, you know, it's not it's not like you people are inherently violent. You people are a bunch of barbarian. That's what you are by nature. You guys are barbarian. You are a bunch of uncivilized beasts. That's exactly what you are. It's in your bloodline. 
you like to go around and murder innocent people, okay, defenseless people, weak people. Those are senior citizens. You went out there, you shoot them, you kill them. That's what you like to do. It's not like you have any mental issue. This is something you like to do. It, it is in your nature. Now, beloved, what's happening here, I'm not glorified, nor I am saying this is, um, you know, we tell our people to go out there and then celebrate this thing and stuff. That's not what that is. What that is is prophecies being fulfilled. Those women, they are senior older women. They own daycare and they've been living for a long time. In their life, we must ask, in the lifetime, during the lifetime, during the life line, during the timeline of the life, were they involved in the abuse of our people? Did they or their ancestors were involved in murdering, killing, abusing our people? One of them on a daycare. Did they do stuff to our children? When those young, well, when those senior citizens were young women, did they, where they participated in certain things that involved the death of one of our brethren or his sister? Were those people somewhat connected to the crime and the demise of our people back then? Did they do something in order for them to deserve something like that. Because they weren't doing anything. They were just in the car traveling. And this guy come out there with a, uh, a handgun. And start, he, he fired a hundred round. Okay. In ten minutes. That means he fired at least ten, ten round a minute. And killing those poor people. He killed three of them. And the guy. Well the, the, the two people that he took down. Give me a second. Again, excuse me, who are involved in the destruction of our people. They are related to the politician fellow, the state representative, the senators, the mayors, and all those guys that have big wig job titles. Now, Bridget, when you look at the fact when you look at the evidence, there is no doubt that those people are paying for their past sins. The blessing is over. The blessing is done. Things like that were unheard of back in the 90s. You would have never heard of in the 1980s or 90s in a quiet neighborhood like that. A white man came out of there and killed three white women for no reason because he had mental health so back in the 70s 80s 90s early 2000 through the 2000 pre-2019 we did not have any mental issue suddenly now there is a explosion in mental health crisis we did not have this for the past four five hundred years when you were in your blessing there were no such things Rarely, when one of you do something that heinous and you came out there and say, oh, well, he, he, he forgot to take his pills, he has some mental health stuff, which put a terrible stigma upon the people that have mental health issues. Now, these days, you can't even discuss anything about mental. Telling anyone that you're working on your mental state and your mental health, they assume you're crazy. Anybody that have any mental health issue, the moment they mention that, they assume that you are a very dangerous person. Was this mental health or retribution from the mighty one? Beloved, I will be frank with you, like I always am. Based on what you are seeing here, Based on all those things that are happening here, let us be honest. Is this Jacob's trouble?
Is this the beginning of Jacob's trouble? We must ask, is this the beginning of the mark of the beast? Are those events related to the upcoming or the incoming of the Antichrist or Antichrist, whatever you want to call it? Those events, do they mark judgment upon the Israelites' brethren or nation? Are all those shootings related or even affected us? Although we have a lot of people that look like us that are out there, even the Samaritan, they are not as affected as the other 83 that look like those people that were watching on the screen, they are not that affected. Yea, your deeds are great, O ye Gentiles. All those things that are happening now are retribution of what you did to our people. This is the generation that voted for all the good stuff to be taken away from our people. Those were the women that follow the rules of white supremacy. Those are the people that voted. They have their people in the government. They are the ones that benefit. They are the ones that go ahead and say, keep this thing in our neighborhood. Take those things from their neighborhood. Those are the little senior citizens that you see in the booth voting against our people, not for their own advantage. Remember, 83 didn't build anything for themselves. They built everything against us. They never build, they don't care about themselves. They care about your destruction. At the end of the day, 83 just want to hear about Chicago. That's all. Three are down there. Hmm, those are three senior citizens. I don't care. But yeah, there, there was a shooting in Chicago. That's right. That's right. That's right. What about Chicago? Yeah, yeah. What about Chicago? That's all they worry. They worry about you 24-7. Now, beloved, with that being said, if this is not Jacob's trouble, Indeed, based on the evidence that we acquired of over three or four years or years ago, this is indeed Esau's trouble and the 83 tribulation. Now, let us bring more evidence. Let us bring more videos to show our people, to tell them, be at peace. There will be no Jacob's trouble. We went through Jacob's trouble already. There is no such thing as a Jacob's trouble. Again, this is Esau's trouble. You can see it. This is 83 demise. Let us connecting the dots. Morena was a wife, sister, and mother to three kids. Like anything you would want in a mom, it was her. Michelle Rodriguez is Anna's youngest daughter. She says on Saturday afternoon, her... Her name is Michelle. Of course, I let the age of the 18-year-old fellow, the 73-year-old senior, I'll let all those things onto you to do your own homework. But we're going to look at this. This is what seems to be the healthy family. Father, uh, mother, children, and, and aunties and friends are happy living, you know, wearing the little maoyos and stuff. And and Sophia Beausole, which means beautiful son, you know, Shemesh and the Miss. And yes, this seems to be the happy family, okay? But hey. Her mom took her older sister, Amy, to get her hair done and pick up her dress for prom, which was that night. She was like, oh, like, we finally get to see her get ready. Okay, uh, the name Michelle Rodriguez, of course, Michelle Michael, which is in the mist. And then again, brethren, all those things are still happening in, of course, Texas. Now, why is that? Remember, the, the I think the one that happened over there in the mall, it happened in Texas. I believe in 2021, 
Texas passed a law that you can buy a handgun without no license or something like that. You can just go ahead and buy one. If I'm not mistaken, please, if I am, uh, correct me, put the proper law into the comment board or the chart. They have made it a law or legally legal that you can go ahead over there and purchase a handgun without that much of paperwork. And a lot of people were going out there and say, well, you see, Jacob's trouble going to start and they're going to start shooting our people. The white supremacists is going to go over there. And we told them straight up, they are buying those guns to kill themselves. They are buying those guns to kill a bunch of Texans. You will see in the next few years, everything's going to happen in Texas because that was the intention. Their intention was get more guns. They already had all the guns, but get more. Get more to put on more on those guns and go out there and kill our people. In fact, what you've been seeing is them killing each other. This happened in Texas. The more happened in Texas. The accident that happened the other day, nine people were no more, happened in Texas. And all those things, those things happened in Texas. We had made evidence to prove from the last video that we had released, the scream they were hearing in the sky in Bryan, Texas. The whole Texas state is under judgment. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, Republican, red state and stuff. Look at all those violence. Nobody's saying anything because the, code, the, the word Republican is code word for white. The code word for black is Democrat. Blue, white, left, right. Those are that's how they they find the, the the satisfaction when they are talking. But when you look at this, they all happen in Texas. Judgment is upon the Texans because of what they did. They've done a lot. All right. Now we're going to watch this. Her name is Michelle, and you know who's in the mist. Eddie, she didn't even get to see it happen. Dallas police say on Saturday, just after 4 p.m., officers arrived for a shooting. Two cars headed eastbound were shooting at each other, and neighbor surveillance video captured the cars as they passed by. One of the bullets entered Michelle's mother's car. Her sister was in the passenger seat. And all she heard was gunshots, and she just said that my mom just like, like made like a signal that she, like she couldn't breathe, and then well she just leaned on Amy's shoulder, and then that's when they crashed, and then that's when. They, <laughs> That's what Amy was saying, that she, she called the ambulance. I put the shirt on the wound. Again, all right, this fellow who stopped to help, his name is Jacob Faz. Now, you have Michael, then you have Jacob, you have Rodriguez, you have Faz. You can't make this up, man. It's not like something we're making up. Michael is on the behalf of Jacob protecting it. Now, Again, beloved, we must ask those people that those things are happening, were they connected to certain things or the abuse or the unnecessary punishment that we have received from 83? Were they connected? Are they, are, are they involved? Were they involved? Okay? And then again, all those women, they were shot in the car. They had nothing to do with anything. They were just minding their own business and they got shot. Okay. And then they die. And I lifted her up, tried to see if I could get a response out of her and I couldn't. Jacob so Foss was driving home with his wife and stopped and to help, but room. there was nothing much he could do. Anna Moreno was taken to the hospital, but she died hours before Mother's Day. It hurts. It really does hurt. Cause... Okay, hours before Mother's Day. This, this is a this is a horrible thing right there. You know, you every Mother's Day, this young lady will always remember that her mother got murdered during that special day. Okay. Now this is their stuff, Bridget. I have no comment. I have nothing to tell those people. I have. I had received instruction from the holy one to stand down i have said a, a, a enough everything that we had said those videos still there you can always go watch them we said enough there is nothing more that need to be said we cannot say anything that will change this or make this better it can only get worse <laughs> we all had such a great bond with my mom and it hurts, it hurts that we lost her so so early <laughs> 
On Sunday afternoon, loved ones, including Amy, the daughter who witnessed her mother's final moments, and Jacob. Uh, they asked us if we could be here today. They were they've been very grateful with us that we stopped to render aid. All showed up to the crash site to honor a mother. Anywhere you would see her, she would have her bright red lipstick and <laughs> her gold jewelry. She just she loved those colors. Whose life was senselessly taken. She was the best person you could ever be. She didn't deserve anything that happened to her. In East Dallas, Sophia Beausoleil, NBC5. Thanks for watching our YouTube. Now, this is a tragedy. Again, as you can see, Texas, and those people didn't do anything. They were just sitting in their car, driving, and some random shooting, then they die. Again, those things, you used to hear them back in the 90s, and everybody was like, well, that's those people are inherently violent. They are a pathological liar. Good for them. Pull yourself by the bootstrap. They're, all those people, that's what they were saying. Now, thoughts and prayer. No one say anything. Okay, all right, let's keep on moving. Water. And here's more cell phone video. You see this woman with a backpack in tow coming out of the ocean. This is in Sunny Isles Beach. While we were in the hotel, we saw like cops and we were hearing sirens and we were a little bit confused. And then when we came outside, we just saw a bunch of like um, Asian people that were being stopped. And nothing, apparently they said they came in a boat and there was about like 15, 10, 15 of them. And they caught like four or five over there. Over there being the beach entrance by the Newport Beach Hotel, where you can see the migrants sitting up against a wall and then ultimately being led away in handcuffs. We're told that some migrants ran off but were detained a short time later. And right now at 4 o'clock, new video from the scene of a migrant landing on Sunny Isles Beach. Border Patrol agents calling after four Chinese migrants made it to shore. It is unclear if this is a migrant smuggling operation. An investigation is now underway. Local 10's Alex Finney is live at the scene with the details. Alex. And Nicole and Calvin, authorities are looking into all of that. Mind you, when this happened earlier this morning, there were plenty of people on the beach. So, of course, we got plenty of video of these migrants coming ashore. As you mentioned there, all of this is still being investigated. This is brand new video just into our newsroom, showing some of the migrants jumping off of a boat near the pier. You're seeing what looks to be easily over a dozen people landing in the water. And here's more cell phone video. You see this woman with a backpack in tow coming out of the ocean. Now, what, what seems to be the issue here? Chinese migrant comes ashore in Sunny Isle, which is you know close to Miami. Uh, right, Sunny Isle is about like uh, 10, 15 miles from where I'm at. Notice that they don't call them boat people. Notice they don't call them illegal aliens. Notice they don't say anything about their country. Notice they don't say anything about how China is poor, how they have AIDS. Remember back in the 80s when the so-called Haitian were coming over there, they were arrested on the spot. They were bundled together. Police were everywhere, gun draw, helicopter. And you had people saying, well, they have AIDS and we don't want the AIDS to come in and, and spread. Uh, those boat people, those illegal aliens, they are coming over there to take all the good jobs. And, you know, they are running free from Haiti because Haiti is poor and they have all crimes over there, voodoo and all that stuff. And uh, the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere and stuff. You don't hear any of that. You don't hear how those people, wait, what make the so-called Chinese fled the home like that? Why they have to come here in the fourth part? Is this the first time this happened? Of course, this is not. This thing been happening. It's just like it's getting out of control. China is doing very, very bad. People think, China, oh, China going to be the next superpower. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what's that going to be. China going to be the next superpower. No, oh, hell no. Notice they don't call them alien or invaders. They call them migrants. They're just migrating. That's all. They don't call them illegal alien. When it is our people, 
illegal alien where we have illegal aliens coming over there and do stuff the whole illegal alien was nothing about it was nothing nowhere near the so-called mexicans and uh, latinos and uh, it was all about us the so-called haitian mainly haitian and africans so to speak really they really don't want the so-called haitian here and you can see why they don't call those people by name. They don't say, well, what's happening over there in China? Why Why those people are risking their life to come over here? And quickly, well, what they are taking, what's going to happen for them? They're going to come in the hood and then set up their business and run their business in the hood and become rich again, which is not. You see, let, let we say this before, we're going to say this again. All those people are coming here to serve their slavery. That's all. When that big switch happened, which already happened, when it's going to be visible, feasible, right in your face, concrete, tangible, they are going to serve their slavery, their slavery here. See how the treatment, the cops were working around them and stuff. They don't put their hands and shove them. And then the cops were like searching them for drugs. Were they smuggling drugs? Did they have cocaine in them? Were they smuggling marijuana? They could be smugglers. You know, we have to make sure that we research them, put their faces on on TVs and show their family a bunch of black Haitian people crying and say, please release them and stuff and sending Al Chapton over there, Jesse Jackson over there, say a few words, a few prayers, and then bad mouth and humiliated our people. You don't see anything. Most people didn't even know that thing happened. You don't see any of our people bringing this, say, well, what the hell is going on in China for those people who are coming over there, risking their life and then dying and all those stuff. Okay, then. All right. No problem. You want to know why? Because Genesis 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I George. Yea, indeed, 83 did a lot unto us for over four, 500 years, the so-called the Chinese or the Moabites. Again, I'm not open to discussion about that. The Edomites and the, the Samaritan, all those people that are not us, abuse us, use us. And the blessing run out. The blessing is over. What they are putting over there in China is nothing but a facelift. That's like putting a facelift, a makeup, upon a cadaver. This is a facelift to a decomposing cadaver. A facelift upon a dead being, not even a human. See, China, Japan, and all the European Arabs and all the other ones, they are done. There's nothing they can do. Because also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. We serve all those nations. All those nations have benefited from our struggle. And now the mighty one is judging them. Let us keep on moving and going again you might ask like okay why uh, the holy one is, i mean how the holy one is judging and doing them well you know the 10 plagues of the apocalypse of abraham okay what you see is sorrow sorrow we went into this you can go ahead and read the book yourself and make your own conclusion there won't be any antichrist coming because it already did come in pre-1492, when you people came in and preached another Jesus and turned our brethren, our people, into white folks, okay, the Russian icons say all of that, the glass stain that you found over in Rhode Island, wherever, say all of that. I'm not open to discuss any of those uh, backwarded, uh, non-exciting, mundane stuff. We already went into that. So this is what's happening. The 10 plagues, you can see the plague number nine right there. 
execution by the sword and the plague number one, the sorrow, uh, the the stuff that happened. Let's keep on moving. All right? Thursday evening, just after 5.30. So, hey, let's keep on going. So, as you can see, beloved, it's everywhere. The sword is everywhere, okay? 61st Street, uh, Union, uh, Englewood, uh, you know, 6 plus 1, 7, uh, the, the, the victim were 19 or whatever the age is. It's all over, okay? You know what to do. Put everything over there in the chat room. As you can see right there uh, in the screen, you can see the number nine right here, the number five, 32, five, two, seven plus nine again, uh, seven plus two, nine, uh, two, three plus, three plus, uh, three plus two, five, five, nine, five, five, ten, nine. The number nine, of course, you know, you can't get out of that, okay? This is the number of judgment, okay? The comic number, the ultimate number, you can't get out of that. So that's what's going on here, all right? This track. down the block as then again you can see all those things you can see the number 10 9 again 7 again if you add all those numbers that you're seeing here all those are speaking of course beloved make no mistake a lot of those people are samaritan they are not our people and judgment is upon them okay a lot of them are not even two-thirds they are straight up samaritan okay they are not even two-thirds. They are straight-up Samaritans. So that's what's happening to those people, okay? They are Babylonian, Hittite, Hivite, Edomite, uh, all the nations. Those are not our people at all, and they are being dealt with. Selah, so be it. Let's keep on moving. You know what? Let's, keep, let's, take, let's take the next video, okay? Let's take the next video right here. Developing right now at noon, a standoff coming to a deadly end in Fort Lauderdale. Police say it happened after a man barricaded himself inside a home and set it on fire. Local 10 News reporter Syra Onwar is live at the scene. And Syra, I know you're going to tell us exactly why police are calling this a murder-suicide. We have a lot more information at this hour to report for you now, Christy and Janice. I can also tell you Fort Lauderdale police have been out here all night and all morning. Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue have also returned to the scene here for this active investigation. Take a look at this home to see the extent of the damage from this fire. Again, a very intense situation here, and we also know a lot more now about the woman who was killed here Gwendolyn Bass Kemp is her name. She worked for the city of Fort Lauderdale for about 18 years. We now also know more about the man who was the subject of this incident. Gwendolyn Bass Kemp, an employee with the city of Fort Lauderdale since 2005, killed last night inside a home. Sky 10 flying over the scene Friday morning. The roof of the Fort Lauderdale home damaged from a fire. A few police cars still in the area as their investigation continues. The home uh, was completely burned up because of the delay and making sure that it was safe for our firefighters to enter. The home on Northwest 27th Terrace in Fort Lauderdale's Lake Air neighborhood, the center of an intense police scene Thursday night. Fort Lauderdale police say officers responded to the home around 8.30 p.m. for a reported shooting. When officers got there, they say a man grabbed a gun and then barricaded himself inside the house, and then he set the home on fire. The suspect who barricaded himself, he exited the home, and he shot himself in, in the front area of the home. Did the home and he shot himself. Um, that's her name, Holly Adamson. Is that what that is? Anyway, so brother Ali have a dream, had just had a dream. So uh, you will you will be able to see oh, 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 oh. you will be able to see the dream that brother Ali had, and it it should be it should be scheduled. It, is it already out? No, it should be out. Once you see it, you will see the connection between Ali and uh, the son of Adam. Okay, so uh, that's the, that's what happened over there in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, a lot of things going on in Fort Lauderdale. I can make a whole, <laughs> I can make a whole ESO show straight up in Fort Lauderdale. Right, let's keep on moving. Visited the home, and he shot himself in in the front area of the home the uh, adult female was inside of the home. Today, authorities identifying the body as Gwendolyn Lynette Bass Kemp. 
The man, identified as 71-year-old Richard Kenneth McDonald, also from Fort Lauderdale. A neighbor tells us last night's investigation scene was an unfamiliar one. The situation, why he take the, the gun and fire the women, I don't know, but this area is quiet. Fire crews further assessing the scene as police continue gathering evidence. At this time, we're still working to determine if the shooting that we originally responded to was in fact the um, female that was found deceased. We believe that to be the case at this time, but we have to confirm that and with the fire and the damage that the fire caused. We turn now to loved ones remembering a beloved Fort Lauderdale City employee killed in a murder suicide. We brought this to you as breaking news last night as police surrounded a as breaking news. There you go. A lot of those folks, man, they are Samaritan. You know, they look like us, but when in fact they are Samaritans, okay? So this dude, you know, as you can see, there are a lot of things going on out there. He just snapped, he killed his wife, set the house on fire, and he killed himself. That means like he took everything. He took her, took the house, took everything. You know, this kind of hatred, this kind of things, they're not, they're not just pop up like this. That means this thing been brewing. It's been brewing for a while. There is a great animosity in there. There, 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 there. There's a great anger in this fellow. Okay. He he killed a wife, okay, which is a fire rescue worker, and then kill himself. Well, he set the house on fire and kill himself. I mean, that's, you know, that's crazy, man. It, it literally took everything. He took the wife, took the house, he took himself. You know, the whatever she's a mother of whatever the kids or the children, there you know, nothing left, man. You know, he, he just took everything. That's that's a lot, man. But anyway, skip just just take another minute out of this and go to the ah, no, we are into this thing right here. Weef. All right. We brought this to you as breaking news last night as police surrounded a burning home. And now we're hearing the 911 calls for help from the victim's son. And local 10's Christian Delarosa alive now in Fort Lauderdale with the tragic details. Christian. You know, we've had a steady stream of people driving by to see the scene for themselves, to express their shock and tell us why they feel this tragedy so deeply. Loved ones say 71-year-olds Gwendolyn Bass Kemp and Richard McDonald had been together for years. We knew them both, knew them both since high school. He was a good guy. It, it hurts. It hurts deep. Okay, no, knowing someone that is in their 70s since high school, and then you realize they are capable of something like that, which shows you you don't know people at all. You don't know what this person is thinking and going through at all. They put a good face. They put a good front. People are good at that. People are very good. They are very good at lying and faking and making things seem plausible until something like that is done. Police say it was a murder-suicide. He pulled the gun on you. Thursday night, the victim's son calling 911 on McDonald. He pulled the gun out on me. Like, he is a military vet. I know he has a license to carry or whatever. Upon arrival on scene, the suspect pretty immediately armed himself, barricaded himself inside of the residence, and believe, we believe he set the home on fire. The fire burning out of control as firefighters were unable to enter for their own safety against the armed man barricaded inside the home fully engulfed and things took a turn for the worse. At a certain point during the situation, the suspect exits the residence. He is still armed. Um, he then takes the gun and shoots himself. Both the suspected shooter and his victim grew up in this neighborhood along Fort Lauderdale's Northwest 27th Terrace. Beautiful sister, beautiful family. Bass Camp worked for Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue. Her family, revered by many, the park down the street named after her father, James Bass, Fort Lauderdale's first black dentist. She's totally, totally going to be missed. Totally going to be missed. They seemed like a, a regular couple. Again, her father was the first black dentist of Fort Lauderdale. Then again, you know, anytime you read the first Negro, the first that, you need to look deeper into this. 
a lot of them, that's not what that is. A lot of them, they sold out their own people. A lot of them stole us out. A lot of them were Samaritan. And uh, the daughter ended up, you know, perishing like this, man, you know. Uh, you can see and feel the, the great hatred that was in this man. He even hated the son. The son came upon him. He pulled a gun upon him. And this guy was a vet, an ex-military, you know, pulled a gun upon the guy. And then the guy back up, you know, called 911 and, you know, killed the mother, set the house on fire, killed himself. You know, the, the great judgment is upon the land, man. Okay, then again, this is the plague number nine, execution by the sword, uh, execution by the sword right here. And let us keep on moving and take the next video. Hold up here at a church in the first funerals for the victims of the Allen Outlet's mass shooting were held tonight. Mourners gathered at a church in Carrollton tonight to mourn the Cho family, Cindy and Q, and their three-year-old son, James. All three killed in Saturday's mass shooting. Now, those are the three people, a whole family, Gretchen, okay? A whole family gun, all right? A whole family gun and this stuff. And none of them look like us. We didn't do this. We, did, we You see how they already forget about that? Let, let this thing be one of our people that went out of their freaking mind and do something like that. Oh, oh man. That, that, you would, that would be the icing on the cake. But anyway, they are not, the media are not making an eye out of this. Why this violent beast went over there and killed this beautiful family? That they're doing nothing to people. They were just enjoying them all. And this guy came out there and put them all out. The Cho's other son survived and he was in fact just released from the hospital. Fox 4 Stephen Dial is live in Carrollton with the story. Stephen. Tonight, the family wanting their privacy, but hundreds showed up here at a church in Carrollton for, as you mentioned, the first funeral of the victims, three of the victims that were killed Saturday in that Allen Outlet Mall shooting. The survivor, the surviving child, released from the hospital today. Five days after a gunman killed eight people and injured others at the Allen Premium Outlets, mourners gathered in Carrollton to celebrate the lives of the Cho family members who died. Cindy, Q, and their three-year-old son, James, were all killed Saturday. Six-year-old William was injured but survived. The funeral was closed to the public and media, but the family shared a statement saying, quote, we wish to express our deep gratitude and appreciation for the outpouring of support from the community. William is at home and continuing to do well. I spoke to the uncle of William on the phone. He asked for privacy, but says the family is trying to get through this difficult time together. We're certainly heartbroken over the news of the shooting in Allen, Texas. William is a student at Prestonwood Christian Academy, and the school says I'm together. We're Dr. Mike Gadal, Prestonwood Christian Academy superintendent. Again, you see this is happening to the 83 is what they were or more by Samaritan. He tied he right Arabic. It's happening to them. And Mike is in the means. And the main name is Mike God. Mike, the one who's like God, Gada. What does the word Gada mean? What does the name Gada mean? No, not to grow, become great. According to Bible study tools, okay. to grow, become great or important, not promote, da. make powerful, praise, da. magnify, do great things. Da. Okay. There we go. No, that's God hard. Is that what that is? Is it, is it double D? Yeah. G O D D R. Um, no. God hard, Gada as the boy's name of German origin, which means Gada is God hard. God hard. Hmm. Ah, it's German. Okay, it's German for God hard. You know, God going hard with Michael. The only one going hard with Michael, Mike Gada. So, of course, when we look at the something like... Oops. William is at home and continues... For privacy but says the family 
Okay, when you look at uh, this this number on the car right now, Mike got uh, Mike going hard for the God's going hard for Mike. So when you have two two seven uh, one, and you know on the behalf of which tribe, on the behalf of who this is being done. Let me just uh, enlarge this a little so that people can see it. Okay, two plus two plus seven plus one equal 12 the 12 tribe and then the next one that happened here is trying to get through this difficult time together we're certainly heart okay my god okay my god he's a christian superintendent those are the people that keep the truth from the world those are the people that lie and misguided the world those are the people that led the world astray we are trying to correct it what this fellow did here but nonetheless uh, there you go. This is what's happening now. Over the news of the shooting in Allen, Texas. William is a student at Prestonwood Christian Academy, and the school says some staff members attended Thursday service. Earlier this week, the school superintendent and church pastor released a video message asking for prayers for the chose. We have faith. We do have faith, and we don't trade what we don't know for what we know. We know God is good, that he's working all things together for good. The Korean Society of Dallas is offering the public a chance to pay their respects to the Cho family through Saturday at a memorial inside the Korean Cultural Center. Mourners have been bringing flowers and praying for the victims. People have donated more than $1.8 million to a fund for William. And See how they come together? See how they come more than $1.8 million, okay? When that thing happened in Buffalo, who gives money? When, that hap when things happen in the hood, who gives money? Then again, beloved, let me tell you something. The so-called Korean, they watch this, okay? They saw that. The Chinese, the Japanese, the others, they see how their own people are being killed over here. And they know and they saw for a fact that we are not the perpetrator. They saw what's going on. They are not as dumb as our people when they see something like that happen. They quickly, when, when, when something like that happened has nothing to do with us, we quickly involve in that, oh my God, and this and that, oh this, this and this, this really make us look bad, us, us, we need to come together. They don't do that when things happen to us, but when it happened to them, they saw that. This thing went viral in Korea, South and North. North Korean, they watch this. The Chinese, the Japanese, they know that. They see what's going on here. They see how this man get over there and kill those innocent people. Okay? And then they are not seeing that, wait a minute, we are not doing this, the so-called blacks. Okay? They are well aware of this. Make no mistake. And as his extended family asks for privacy, they did want the public to know this message about helping others. They said in a statement at this point, we are going to close this fundraiser to new donations. But if anyone wishes to continue their support, we strongly urge you to consider donating to the GoFundMe pages of the other families affected by this tragedy. Today, we got an update from the hospitals where the surviving victims are. And for the first time since the mass shooting, no victim is listed as being in critical condition. All right, so that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Let's look at the faces of the, uh, the victim again. It's hard to believe it's been nearly a week of aching hearts, tearful breakdowns, grasping for understanding, of struggling to even find the words because in moments like these, sometimes there just aren't any. We've grappled with why, with what to do now, but the most important thing has always been who? Them. The people stole. Now, let's take a, a look. Let me see if they're going to put their names. Uh, let's let's watch Pull in from their loved ones in our world. 20-year-old Christian LaCour was from Farmersville. Okay, he is 20 years old. His name is Christian LaCour. LaCour mean the court or, you know... The, uh, the circle is that like cool it's just like a family stuff but anyway christian 20 years old all right he was a security guard young man all right this doesn't look like a typical israeli like could be but does not he was working as a security guard at the mall when okay. the gunman attacked 
And we also must acknowledge the bravery of Allied Security Guard Christian LaCour, who evacuated one individual to safety and was shot while courageously remaining to help others. Police hail him a hero. His mother wrote on Facebook that he was her baby, her light, her peace, now gone. Again, that's exactly what happened to our children. Okay, when they were being murdered and killed by the police and being sent to alligators as bait, that's the type of thing that happened to us. But, you know, when our mothers, when our women say things like that, they were saying, well, you should have raised your child to do something better. You should have been doing something better out there. You know, security guard, he should have been a doctor if he was a doctor. And so this is the type of things they were saying when our women were grieving. All right. She said her family needs prayer. Aishwarya Tharikanda was shopping with her friend for her 28th birthday. She okay, so 28th or 20th? The 28th, no, 28th. Aisha Waya, okay, whatever, East Indian or aka the Elamite, so to speak. Okay, those are, now you can see what we can say, Elamite and uh, Elamite, and then so far we haven't seen our people. Or they can all be Israelites, don't get me wrong, they can all be Israelites, but straight up two-third, okay, rejects that don't want to come back. And there you go, all right? She was an engineer. Her boss says she was smart and determined. The grief is there and I think it will be there for a very long time. She's just simple, she grasps everything and she's very friendly, you know. It sent a shocking waves across the country, across the world. Her family worked from India with a friend in North Texas to bring her body home quickly to honor her Hindu faith. Ilio Kumana Rivas's family also received the tragic news from another country. His brother in Venezuela called his little brother special, the best thing that God could give his family, saying he went in search of the American dream to help his family. Okay, and then this is what happened. Okay, come here to get the American dream because a lot of people still believe that thing exists. The American dream was slavery, was the labor of slavery, you know? The American dream was like the wealth they made from slavery and all you have to do is show up to a place, abuse our people once more, and then get paid. You don't have to do anything. It is just now 83 truly have to work. That's why you hear all those complaining. It is just right after 2020 when everything closed and then now they really have to work to earn money and then they can't. That's why they, everybody like complaining, oh, job is not paying and stuff. Everything we've been saying, they never respect that. And suddenly now, everybody want to say the same thing. Everybody want to protest, want to better wages and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. He said his brother always smiled and always lived with a positive word. As families mourn for their lost loved ones, there are also families forced to navigate that grief while helping surviving relatives heal. Daniela and Sofia Mendoza's mother. Okay, Daniela. Daniel, 12 and 1. Daniel, you know, Daniel is in the mix. Okay, okay. Just point that out. Mother is recovering from her injuries in the hospital, but when she is released, she will have to return home without her daughters. Daniela was 11 in the fourth grade, and eight year old Sofia was in second grade. Okay, those are two sisters. And the, the mother going to, she's in the hospital. And when she come out, you, both of your daughters are gone. This is no joke, man. This is the most barbaric thing going on out there, man. And people are not talking about that thing. They are not saying how violent those people are. For no reason. Those poor, sweet little children didn't do anything to this guy, but he did this to them. And no one's saying anything. Say, why? Well, the, the, the judgment is out there. And you people are freaking beasts and violent criminals. That's what you are. That's what, that's what you guys been doing. That is the truth. Ain't no way around it. Their principal at Cox Elementary School in Wiley ISD called the girls rays of sunshine. Their loss is felt by their school community. It's trauma and tragedy that I just simply can't understand. And by the community at the girls' gymnastics gym. Just devastated. 6-year-old William Cho's family also has a long road ahead of them. William was at the mall with his parents, Cindy and Q, and his 3-year-old brother James. 
So this is what's gonna happen. As you can see, this is a picture of a healthy family, okay? Father, mother, and children. You know, smiling and you know, do their stuff. And then they got killed. And the little boy is the only one that will survive. And guess what? If those people were, you know, if this thing that did happen in the late 80s, let's say late 80s or so to speak, and this little boy right there, that six-year-old, you know, mother, his brother and his father or no more, and then this happened, let's say, in the 1980, and he grew up. You know who this guy would train to oppress, humiliated, abuse? Our people. He would have he would have already forget about the whole thing that the other guy did to his whole family. He would have keep all of our people out of job, you know, um hire his own people and most definitely the people that did this to his own family. Okay, they would have gang up on us still. Don't think like when things like that happen to them and they say, Oh, well, we need to gang up with the so called yeah, Israelites or black folks over there to combat this. No. They're going to come against you. They're going to take the rage out on you. But not anymore. They are not under the blessing. And they're going to go at each other's throat. Point blank, period. They were returning some clothes he'd received for his birthday. William will now have to live his life without his parents and his little brother. In a statement, Terrible his family thing. confirmed that William Terrible is home from the hospital and continuing to do well as they plan multiple funerals. In a previous statement, the family said their focus is on making sure William has a happy, healthy life. How? How? How, how this child is going to have a happy, healthy life? How? Did our children had a happy and healthy life? Did we have a happy and healthy life after you murdered and killed and hung and lunch our people? And put us in slavery and did all those stuff. You think did did we recover from that? We never did. We are alive though, but we never did recover for what you did. We are going to recovery. How is going to have a happy and healthy? He's going to twenty years later. Well, I'm happy this thing happened. I'm I'm alive. I have a job. I'm an engineer. I'm making a lot of money. I got a family on my own. Oh. That, that's happiness. I'm healthy. And a few days after that declaration, he died 988. This little boy will never be happy nor healthy. This is not something that you just come out of it like that. Okay? These faces, these people were children, parents, siblings, friends. See how the whole thing is emotional, how those are human beings. Uh, they were, you know, friends, family, daughters, and siblings, offspring, and stuff. When it happened to us, they just bundle us up a bunch of criminals that, you know, hey, we, we they, they may not be criminals, but, you know, they got caught up in the wrong place at the right time. And, and you know, it's just, it's what happened. And they would, they, our own people will come out there and say, oh, it's true, it's true, it's true. They should have been in church. They should have been this, it should have been that. Why are they going to the mall? It, 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 it study the statistics say, the data when we get from the FBI say, most mall shoplifting were committed by, you know, people that live in a poor neighborhood. And they were going out, they were committing crime and stuff. And then this happened, save the taxpayer some money. That's exactly what you people were going, well, used to say, was going to say, but... You're no longer under this blessing. And then how long we are into this thing. All right, beloved. We will move to part two.